Hey there everyone, welcome back to All of Fabric 5. Today, let's have a deep dive into deep mob learning. <laughs> if you can hear that scratching sound, that's just my cat trying to get cozy. So deep mob learning, as far as I can tell, the concept is like you acquire info about different types of mobs. And here's the categories. Nether mobs, overworld mobs, slime, zomboids, skeletrons, end ones, ghosts, illagers, and ocean. So you acquire information about these different kinds of mobs, and then you run it through simulations to simulate combat and you get their drops. That sounds pretty cool. And the best thing about it is, it seems to me like it would fit really well into the style of the base. Because this is us playing around trying to learn about AE2 and automation. So I'm excited about it. There are different kinds of mob farms in this pack, like um, Conjuring. We played around last playthrough with that. There's Spirit, which I'm saving for next time because in 1.19, Spirit has a huge, like a, a huge revamp. Plus there's things like Just Cursed Dirt, which uh, increases, like ridiculously increases the spawn rate uh, wherever you place it. But no, this time it's deep mob learning. So a simulated mob farm. Soot covered redstone you get from just bashing redstone. I love that. How do I zoom in on this guy? I really want to see that close up. And you probably need a whole bunch of it. So let's get started by perhaps just getting a stack. Then we'll get at least four of these soot machine casings. They're also kind of a common ingredient, it seems. Our loot fabricator is what we want to end on, but equivalent of killing 16 mobs in this category. Yeah, but we need we need to have a way of getting pristine matter first. This stuff. And you get this. Well, it seems to imply you can only get it from from uh, doing these trials, which we're not going to do today. It's not exactly true. Ah, uh, here we are. It's not exactly true, but we'll get to that in a second. Because you can also get it from the simulation chamber. But this doesn't really have any uh, recipes for its uses in REI. But once we get this kind of matter, so this one here, the spooky and scary pristine matter, you run that through a loot fabricator, and it'll give you the drops of these mobs. It's a shame it doesn't just list them. You just have to kind of like watch the pictures go by. So what say first off, we look into getting data models for various mobs, like early kind of mobs, slimes, overworld, zombies, skeletons, and uh, yeah, go level them up a little bit. So we'll leave the kind of machine blocks there for a minute as we craft up some data models and worry about leveling them up first. Overworld seems easy enough. Zombies, skeletons. Somehow we don't have, somehow we've only got three bones, which is, ugh, that's a problem. No, that's not true, surely. Yeah, we got plenty of bones in here. Mm. We were walking around uh, with our mob drop dank, so we, we definitely do have enough bones to make this one. Overworld, zombie, skeleton, and and the slimy. Play to our reward. Then we have to put those things in a deep, a deep learner. Blah, blah, blah. Pick your data model, put it in. A deep one learner supports four data models at the same time. It also shows the tiers, but you have to keep it in your hands, in your eye, your hotbar, and start killing mobs. Can do. Like so. Alrighty, now we open it with just a right click. It can store four, but we need to, I'm not sure, let's, um, I guess let's go find some action down in a cave and test this thing out. Oh, maybe not this cave. <laughs> Imagine I can offhand it, but we have the space to not have to worry about that. Um, I just want to kill sing. All right, let's let's kill the slime. What does that do for us? Okay, so it seems to level up. You have all four at once. I was worried that it would only like you have to kind of somehow select one and say, "Hey, work on this one," and it just stores four others. But no, it seems to level up. Any of the data models you have in there. So now we have one. We 
Okay, the counter towards Overworld. There might be like a priority system here because I've, I'm killing skeletons, but the skeleton data model is not increasing. And it might be because all those kills are counting towards... Oh! <laughs> and it might be it might be because all those kills are counting towards the overworld data mod. We'll find out. Hey, I think that guy stole my kill. How are we looking now? Two and five. Yeah, I think that might be... I think that might have resolved it. Three for skeletons, five for overworld. Yeah, so things don't get double counted. <laughs> And the zombies aren't updating at all because Overworld's taking priority. All right, so let's let's do this then. Skeleton zombies. Skeleton zombies. Slimy Overworld. That might be the way to do it. All right, don't mind me. I'm just going to go around, heal in a little bit, collect some data. One more zombie and this is going to go up a tier. Okay, the zombie model's upgraded to basic. Okay, might just um, mess around a little bit, kill a few more, and we'll head back to base and have a look at the next step. Uh -huh, so we've got the skeleton, zombie, and overworld data models uh, set up. Slimy, we didn't have as much luck as I would have thought. The... Um, Killing the ones on the slime island there didn't seem to increase its number, so yeah, we're gonna have to figure that one out. But we do have skeleton, zombie, and overworld data models upgraded to basics. So let's look at putting that into a simulation chamber and generating some loot. Provide the simulation chamber with energy and place some polymer clay in the top right slot that has an E in it. Now you will have to put one of your data models into the simulation machine. Blah, blah, blah. Minimum basic tier, that's what we got. Some polymer clay and some energy will start running simulations. There's four types of ordinary matter. Mm -hmm. Twilight matter? Didn't see. I don't think there is twilight. Mm, yeah, I don't think there is twilight matter in this pack. That must be a typo or a description written for another, another place. Simulation chamber, please. Oh, cyan dies. You're kidding me. <laughs> Thankfully, we have Batania, which lets you plant and, um... Hmm? Oh, that's just the regular stuff. I think you... Yeah. Thankfully, the, the Batania flower petals are all kind of renewable. So let's try that again. Simulation chamber. Yes, please. And we need to put that somewhere. I need to put that somewhere. But now let's just check it here. We can feed it energy just on the side here. That'll power up. Please insert a data model to begin simulation. All right. Our good friend, the skeleton. Obviously we don't have any, cannot begin missing the polymer lay. I think possibly what we should do is make a recipe for it. Get a crafting card. And an interface. I get a bunch of them. I'm always needing them. I don't quite like the look of it, but it's all temporary, I guess. Give that a crafting card and this a request to always have a stack of polymer clay available. We'll make that recipe available. And we should start seeing that stuff coming in automatically. I have to put an item pipe and a servo on it. And hopefully this starts coming in. Let's have a look. What's what's the holdup? It's crafting iron dust. So our smelting is just not fast enough. Right, we've got our 64 there. Output. Oh, it looks like it needs to go into the top or something. That was odd. Is that right? That's the I. So the I is the top. Maybe the E is the bottom. Yeah, I think that's the case. I'm thinking, once we get the polymer clay here, 
I'm thinking the polymer clay is going to go into the right spot. No, not the bottom. Not the front. <laughs> it's not that side. The side doesn't like it. How is this a thing? Uh, this, this is actually, um, the description is actually wrong, right? It says, put polymer clay in the top right slot that has an E in it. So that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to get it into here, and it kept on putting it into there. This should definitely read that it has an I in it. Okay. So all we have to do is put it on the top. And do. Now we have simulations running. And this guy, this interface, will always make... Will always craft 64 polymer clay, which isn't a complicated craft. I think clay balls are the only things here we don't have automated really uh, from ore, but I can just go off on an adventure and, uh, and get a whole bunch. And now we have pristine matter and overworld matter being, being produced. The overworld matter is a cool kind of substitute crafting recipe, and apparently you can eat it for XP. I can't. It's not really, uh, wasn't really that nutritious. So with bone mill and one overworld matter, you can make 22 bones. That's, that's a very good ratio. Iron from rotten flesh, that's pretty good. Gunpowder from coal. I think we might actually need this recipe. That way we can keep the, the sulfuric acid up and running. And similarly with hellish matter, you can use hellish matter to get items. Okay, this is really handy. And that's how we get our blaze and our gas tears without even needing to go kill any gas. And this is how we get, this is how we get nether stars. I want them. I really want them. All right. So perhaps next time we think about setting up one of these in the farm to farm nether stars. And one of them. And that should be our steel jetpack. Nice. Get a little quest for it. Hopefully it's a good one. I had a fact loot bag. All right, I can't wait to open this one. Places floating lights. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So things are working pretty well. As you can see, just by going through the cycles here in the simulation chamber, it produces um, pristine matter of whatever data model you're using. And it keeps producing the overworld matter, but you need to export this stuff back out. And can we squat for this? Like so. Okay, and that'll just keep running indefinitely. But it's not doing us any good here. I've already found a much better spot for it. And that's over here. I just hook this up to our main line so we can get a, a, a couple of channels coming in, eight channels coming in. And then if we just... Put our uh, interface there, like so. Keep this stocked up with 64. Then we can actually put four down. I doubt we'll need any more than four. They can get fed their polymer clay from the top. Yeah, so I'm not sure if I made it clear, but the data model you have levels up. You see there it says 88 of 192. So that's an advanced data model. We put it in as a basic tier data model and it's leveled up just from um, just from going through the rounds. So our other ones aren't as advanced. That's only 19. That's 20 and this one is three. And then we'll just put a, um, whatever you call these ones, a, a retriever servo in there. So it requests all the items that they put out. It requests them back. And now we've got a little, little setup here, but the power is struggling. We'll worry about that a little bit later. Next up is a loot fabricator, which is what you throw the the pristine matter into to get cool loot. So each pristine matter is equivalent of killing 16 mobs of that category. Yep, we get that. All right. So let's craft up the loot fabricator. Maybe for now we can just sit that there. It doesn't, it's not supposed to take polymer clay. Okay, this thing is, it doesn't require power. That's interesting. Whoa, we just got cursed droplets. 
with a we got a whole bunch of goodies there. Oh, okay, that's pretty good loot. But I'm more interested in like how do we? I'm just wondering if there's a way to turn this guy off. Okay, I think actually we could probably do it with these pipes instead from Modern Dynamics. Now let's let's use an extractor. An extractor on this with a redstone signal to high. So turn the signal off, put that in, it should stay still. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. And when we power it, we'll see it come through. All right, good. Actually, that interface is not at all needed. All right then, well, I've done a little bit off camera and I just tidied up this, this little setup here. So it's the same deal with the, um, with the lever here, allowing that pipe. <laughs> oh, these pipes are so frail. Oh God. Uh, allowing that pipe to pass items through. Hey, what happened to the, this had a filter on it. So we just chucked a extractor filter thing, careful not to punch it there. And only the items listed here in the whitelist will be able to pass through. And it connects to the same MI interface uh, that the, the simulation chambers are using. And we can just set here the types of pristine matter that we want to, to send through. But currently we only have a filter of three here, so we need to upgrade this extractor with, I think they're called capacity cards. Let's accidentally make a full stack of them and then get um, a few of these. Let's see how that goes. I mean, there's, there's nine types in total. Well, they stack. And we can just bring in all the different types of pristine matter. So that's all that will be allowed through. I also crafted up a few more data models. The ghost, ocean, and nether. Ocean, pretty easy. We had all those things. The ghost one I actually made with uh, hellish matter to get the gas tiers there. And remember, that's just kind of upgrading the overworld matter. Similarly, for the nether data model, we needed the gas tiers. However, what we're missing here is the uh, end data model and the illager data model, because believe it or not, we haven't actually got a totem of undying yet. And there doesn't seem to be any way to get shulker shells uh, without going to the end. Yeah, for that, you need to be crushing up end stone. And end stone only generates in the end, or with things like extraterrestrial matter, which like that's that's kind of what we're trying to get anyway, right? That's the end goal. Again, needs end stone. So sadly, I'm unable to start farming nether stars, but that can be for next time. And to be honest, I was planning on spending the rest of this episode setting up a mining rig. A mining rig has been developed to create virtual dimensions based on ore data, allowing you to harvest ores without modifying your world. That's a way for us to like just duplicate diamond ore. Uranonite ore, ancient debris, anything we anything we're short of really, and then put some nice finishing touches on our IR setup that we worked on last time. But now I'm thinking I, I kind of want to finish my my collection of Pokemon cards here, so let's instead head off and kill whatever we need to kill to get a totem of Undyne. We should kind of amazed that we haven't found one yet, but that's okay. And then I'm thinking we got to go to the end to get some shulker shells to craft up the end data model. So let's get ready for adventure. Oh, and I found, I was also just doing a bit of mining underground. Uh, I'll show you guys my mine site probably next episode and came across the night vision goggles. Oh, that feels a bit more familiar. We might leave these ones on. And so I might get kitted up just a little bit different. That's a bit more like it. We'll put these guys in there for now. That's kind of our aquatic set. Now we can run a bit faster. Not sure how I feel about that, that FOV effect, but that's okay. Also, this handy tool here. Oh, okay. I put in these enhancers thinking that it would make the electric furnace better, but now it doesn't know what to do with the sand, so we'll take them out, I guess. This cooler here is actually going to make our lives a little bit safer. As you might have noticed at the end of the last episode, we weren't always eating steak when we needed to. Our eternal steak here. We weren't always eating it when we needed it. Because assimilation, which we have on our helmet, um, food is automatically eaten whenever it would not be wasted. So because this is because this fills up four bars of our hunger, basically what it's doing is it's waiting for us to lose four bars of hunger before it eats it. Whereas the cooler, which you can put anything inside, the cooler is much more wasteful. Automatically consumes any food in it. 
Uh, so I think that's going to eat it. As soon as we lose a single bar, it'll take a bite of the steak. Just a little nibble. Oh, and quickly, yeah, uh, before we head off, because we're ready to go now, I think. Uh, before we do, I automated this energizing orb setup here. Super duper easy. I mean, I've just got a pipe running down the bottom here. And that comes into a pattern provider with all the patterns. And if you set the block emote here to do not push crafting ingredients if inventory contains a pattern input, that means it's going to basically just do one pattern at once. So if we did something like, let's say we want, give me 10 of these seal. You can see there it's not overloading the energizing orb there with uh, the incorrect number of things. 10 diamond, it just sends one through. Diamonds take a bit longer than, than the steel did. But yeah, still one at a time. And you guys didn't need to see it, but I also threw many on our three items here that didn't have it. Okay, let's be on our way. First up, is this a modded one? Is this a modded building? I'm not sure. It's definitely large. It's an open plan. <laughs> oh my god, it's an open plan living. How long have they been around for? It must be a fresh meteorite. These guys chose to live in a pretty weird spot. So I think it's an evoker we need to kill. Let's get into it. Is it Johnny that, drop, that drops the, the goodies, the totems? I don't think so. Too tempted. I'll just grab this while I'm here. Ah, is that the guy? Evoker. That's it. That's the thing I'm after. All right. What the hell? You are a loud thing. Are the children screaming or something? Oh my God. What a freaking hideous sound that makes. Got a friendly dragon there. I'm just curious what is the deal here? Are these stairs. Right. Controls how much field of view. Yeah, turn that off. Now I think I can run without the screen changing. Yeah, that's much better. Is this part of our tower? Is this part of our our thingy? A lot of funny business going on here. Probably want to wear our super armor for this. And there's no reason why we have to play fair. Ooh, that's a good looking door. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good looking tapestry. Hey, pal. Whoa, is, is that a vanilla sound? Because that's pretty amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little scared of this place. Doesn't seem like a vanilla one to me. Ooh, I got these are adorable. I see you up there. I see them trying to hide their treasures from me. Two whole bits of paper. And some other crud. It's okay. Always have some more crud. It's actually really cool. <laughs> Kudos to whoever designed these. I love them. Seriously, they're so beautiful. So I'll do it without cheating first, and then what we'll do is we'll just do the usual thing. We'll flint and steal this whole area. Sort it out that way. Ooh. 
It's a spectrum. <laughs> is it? Why a makeover? <laughs> what do you do here? I put tools in. I don't actually know what this uh, what this block does. I mean, it takes swords. It looks like it wants to insert something into a tool. I don't want to take my chances. Curious to get back home and see what that's all about. Got their own cute little bamboo farms. The hell is that? Is there someone summoning this? Where are you guys coming from? Whoa, there's uh, quite a few of them here. I'm not sure I can take them all on. I'm glad we're not wearing our jetpack anymore. We need all that extra armor. I think they also despawn after like a minute or two. So don't have to worry too much. Yeah, like that. I didn't, I can't take credit for that guy. What is that? Whoa. What the hell is that thing? Right, I think I've just got to ignore these jerks while I can. Illuminate shard, that's a thing. That looks like a thing that you put in the altar. What do you shoot me with? What are you? You're a stone golem. I mean, it fired the first shot, right? Cladded chest plate. Mmm. And what's this stuff? Cladded stone. Right. Oh, here we go. This is the treasure chest. Crude cladding. I've never heard of this stuff. It gives you a weak set of armor that just looks cool, I guess. Yeah. All right. I think it's about that time. We just need to find a single piece of flint. Really sorry about this. Hopefully this doesn't spread. <laughs> I think it might actually spread. Yeah, I'd say that looks pretty good. I mean, it doesn't. It objectively looks really horrific. And having to live through some serious bushfires, I, I definitely don't want to... Oh, that's a portal. I definitely don't want to pretend that uh, what just went down was in any way good. But let's not forget that these guys are massive jerks and probably did something to deserve this. Um, I'm not sure the same can be said for the forest. But yeah, if we don't render these chunks in, then the fire won't spread. And then we got no problem, so I would like to check out those stairs, though. Remember there were those stairs that kind of came up from the underworld? Where, where are they? By the way, I think I might be charging my jetpack here. See, it says 1172. We'll stop using it. 12 million again. Honestly, not sure how, but it's charging. Aha! This thing, what is this? Oh, what have I stumbled into here? What is this place? What the hell is this? Um, is this some kind of dungeon crawly thing? I didn't bring any of those cardboard boxes to to wrap up the spawners, so we'll just have to so we'll just have to fight our way through. But we can manage. Not too worried. Especially as spiders are pretty pretty derpy. Yep. Real scary, guys. Real scary. Interesting. We got a bit of a, a 
treasure trove room here. All right, let's have a look if it has anything interesting. Ah oh man, the, the loot in this place does not equate with how, how cool it is. This is stuff that I'm never gonna need. I feel like it'd be nice if there was some, like maybe unique enchants here, a cool weapon or two. That's all we got. All right, fun times. Hey, where's, um, where's Job gone? You know, our little dinosaur guy. Last time I saw them, I, I put them in the pen. I call them Job because I don't really care much for him, so it's no great loss that they went missing. Well, unfortunately, we didn't have time to go to the end, but that's all right. We can just head there next time. So just a little bit of progress every episode. Today, it was automating this deep mob learning simulation chamber and, and loot fabricator. I reckon next time we'll probably have a look at this trial stuff and get our greasy paws on the glitch armor set. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, au revoir, arrivederci, auf Wiedersehen, ciao.